Hello and welcome to Creator Weekly Live for October 29th, 2023. This is the spooky Halloween edition. Now that you're mesmerized, I'm going to take off the glasses so I can actually see <laughs> what I'm doing. Welcome to everyone who's here live. It's good to see you. I hope you're having a great weekend. I'm coming to you from the sunny but windy San Francisco Bay Area. So this week I have some Halloween treats and some updates for AdSense, for X, uh, a tip for YouTube, and a bunch more. But first, I wanted to mention that I will be hosting the eboard chat discussion over on X immediately after the live stream. You can follow me there or follow the on eboard chat hashtag. We'll be talking about account security. And even if you don't join the discussion, I think this is a fantastic opportunity to check your online accounts, security settings, make sure you have the most secure settings, that you have recovery options set, and maybe try pass keys if you haven't tried that. That's an option, not only for your Google account, but for a number of other types of accounts as well. I also, this is just a side note, I just noticed uh, over on X, showing the screen, that it says relevant people, me, uh, my colleague Nina, and then the third person is someone called Peggy Lee Kotak, who has the at Peggy K <clears throat> handle over there. I've always wanted that handle, but what can I do? So that's the actual Peggy K. That's why I'm Peggy K T C. So the first thing I wanted to talk about today, or uh, I should say, welcome to everyone who is in the live chat, uh, joining us from across the United States today. If you're here from outside the US, you're welcome to. <clears throat> It's great to see you all. Jolyn says it's 78 degrees. That doesn't sound like fall at all. Here at least it's only like 70. But that's good news if you are hosting a Halloween party or you want trick-or-treaters. I think that encourages the kids to go out. Many years ago, I used to live in Boston and it was shocking to me how cold it was on Halloween sometimes. The kids there are really troopers to go outside when it's freezing. All right, so first I wanted to talk about <clears throat> how you can participate as a creator in some of the Halloween events. Uh, let me find the correct tab here. So over on YouTube, not surprisingly, they have a hashtag, Halloween with shorts. That's the official YouTube shorts hashtag. The idea is then you can create a short with that hashtag and have Halloween content, of course, and then go to that hashtag and see what other people are posting. There's a lot of sort of fun shorts there, so check that out. Not surprisingly, there is a similar hashtag on TikTok. Theirs is TikTok Halloween. Again, lots of costumes and decorations and other fun Halloween content. So those are the top Halloween updates I wanted to show you. 
there's also a lot of filters. I think YouTube has a, a special Halloween filter in their shorts editor and uh, Instagram Reels and Facebook, I think, have special filters. If you use Google Meet for meetings, there's some fun backgrounds and filters there. I posted a short a couple days ago uh, demonstrating those. So that's for Halloween and Day of the Dead and Diwali. And it just adds some fun to your video get togethers. Um, Eileen says she's having connection issues. Is it just me? My connection seems fine from my side. If anyone else is having an issue with my live stream, please let me know. So moving on to more serious updates, I first wanted to talk a little bit about this discussion that's happening on threads. So threads, as you probably know, is Meta's, <clears throat> Meta's alternative to Twitter. And it's kind of their popular it's Meta's popularity to lose. So um, if you are over on Meta and you're interested in how they look at creators, I think it's an interesting post by the head of Instagram and of Threads. Um, who talks about how they define creators. So they define creators as individuals or groups of individuals that publish original content and demonstrate some level of commercial intent. Commercial intent can be trying to make money, but it can also be advocacy or driving awareness. Examples include um, musicians, athletes, journalists, politicians, activists, makeup artists, and photographers. So they're saying they're focusing on creators rather than what they consider publishers, which seem to be sort of mainstream media publishers. Uh, Eileen says it's working now. That's great. I don't know what the problem was. Apologies for that. Sometimes my internet connection be, can be a little glitchy. So I just wanted to put that out to those of you who are watching and thinking about this. Do you consider this a reasonable distinction between creators and publishers? My personal take is that while you can define a group as creators and define publishers, there's a big area in the middle where it gets kind of fuzzy, where creators, especially if they get big enough, are part of a business. Uh, they may be managed. And I'm not sure there's always a really clear distinction between the two. But it's important because at least over on threads, Meta is saying that they want to sort of promote individuals or groups that they consider creators rather than publishers. And by publishers, it seems like they're mostly talking about the news. So I don't have an answer for that, but I thought it was an interesting distinction that they are making. And so moving on, to some updates. I first wanted to give you guys a suggestion to look at this tutorial from the lady from UNCLE who is a Google product expert. She has posted a guide for creating a YouTube 
products for a client or third party. And this can be trickier than you might think, in part because a YouTube account, your YouTube channel is on a Google account. So really the first step in creating YouTube for a client is often creating a Google account for them and making sure that Google account is secure and that they don't lose the password and the login information. And then you, as the person who's doing this for them, ideally step back and become a manager of that channel so that they are the owner. And if you're having someone make a YouTube channel for you, you should really push back against any service that wants to be the owner of your Google account or the brand account for your YouTube channel. So there's a link to this in my newsletter and my weekly post. You can check out the links in the description of the video for, for, for more information. I recommend you check that out. The next thing that I wanted to talk about really briefly, which I thought was really interesting, is a special tool that has been created, I believe in the University of Chicago, that it allows artists to run their artwork through this tool and then they put it online it poisons the data. So if there's an AI bot scraping the information, this actually makes the AI think that the image is something other than it actually is. I don't understand the science behind it. There is a really interesting article in MIT Technology Review. Um, it points out this uh, poison, it's called nightshade, exploits a security vulnerability in generative AI models, one arising from the fact that they're trained on vast amounts of data, and in this case, images that have been hoovered from the internet, and nightshade messes with those images. So, um, they have some examples of how these images look after they're poisoned. Um, and they actually show that if you start with an image of a dog, it can end up poisoning it so that it returns an image of a cat. It, it's pretty amazing. Again, I don't fully understand how it works, but I think it really shows that there's this sort of <laughs> battle going on between the companies that want really good data to train their AI models and artists who don't necessarily want their images, their photos, their artwork to be included in those models. This is ongoing. And I think we're gonna see more of this kind of adversarial functionality going forward. All right, so on to more serious things. If you are an AdSense publisher, there are a couple of updates that you should know about related to auto ads. So one of the things that AdSense lets you do if you have your own website or blog, is just add this short code and enable auto ads and AdSense automatically inserts what it considers the best ads into your website when people view it. You can go into the settings in your AdSense account to manage where you're going to allow those ads to be inserted uh, how many ads you want and other settings. And so they have a couple of updates. Uh, on October 19th, AdSense 
launched related search for auto ads. This is a new feature that displays search terms related to the content of the pages that users are viewing. And then when a user clicks on a suggested search term, they're taken to a search results page where then there are AdSense for search ads. And that's what you would earn from is those AdSense for search ads. If you had the old link ads on your website, it seems to work similarly to that. Link ads were retired in 2021. So this seems to be the replacement and it's much more automated and part of the auto ads settings. The other update for AdSense is new settings for vignette ads. Now, AdSense often kind of pushes vignette ads. These are ads that appear as interstitials. So when someone visits a page on your website, and then they navigate to a different page or they decide to leave the site, there's this big full screen ad that they have to go through. You've probably seen it when you're on the internet. They supposedly pay very well, but they are extremely intrusive in my opinion. So I don't have those enabled on my own site, but people do. And if you do enable vignette ads on your site, you can now change the frequency that these ads are shown. So the default is every 10 minutes. But you can choose your own frequency anywhere from one minute to one hour, and that will change how often visitors to your site will see these vignette ads. That means if you change it to an hour, someone would have to be on your site an hour before they're shown one of these ads. If you change it to one minute, they're probably seeing the vignette ads all the time as they navigate through your site. This is important if you have these ads activated on your AdSense account, uh, you wanna adjust them so that you're sure that it's not pushing people away from navigating through other pages on your website. Again, you can access these settings in your AdSense account in the ad settings. And there's a bunch of other auto ad settings as well. If you have not checked those settings recently, I recommend that you do that. <clears throat> Another update is from Microsoft. They launched Microsoft Pub Center, or I should say, from what I've read, this is a relaunch of Microsoft Pub Center, where this actually has existed for some years, but they're really updating it and changing it now. This is another advertising product that you can use to monetize your website or blog. It's in the US only, but if you are in the US and you have your own website, you might wanna check this out. They have different ad types. They say that they are compatible with AdSense. I'm not sure how it works exactly because I don't have access at the moment, but it says that you can set up an ad unit where basically the Microsoft ads and the AdSense ads are in competition with each other and the best paying ads should display. Um, it at least sounds like it could be a good thing, depending on how good the ads are in the Microsoft ad network. Looking at the FAQ, it says that there is no minimum amount of traffic required to sign up for these ads. So if you're in the US and you're monetizing your own website, check this out. You may wanna sign up for Microsoft Pub Center and see if that improves your earnings. So those are the main 
money-making updates I wanted to point to you. I also wanted to mention this great new update from Google. If you are looking for information about an image online, there are new options in Google's image search that let you check information about the images you see there. So what you can see is the history of an image. So Google search may have indexed this image from multiple sites. They will show you those sites and when they were indexed. It will show you how other sites use and describe the image. So that can be really helpful if you're trying to understand what an image is actually showing. You may see that five years ago it was described as one thing, but today people are spreading it around the internet as something else. Uh, that happens a lot. And this can give you more realistic information about what is in the image. And it also shows the metadata of the image uh, that can include uh, that it was generated by AI. It includes when the image was created, maybe where it was created. So all of that is really useful information. Um, I'm just showing the example that they have in the announcement where you look for this image, you click the three dot menu icon, say about this image, and then you can see this one, it's at least 10 years old and the other sites where it's shown. There's also a Google Fact Check Explorer. This is aimed at journalists, but anyone can access this. It's available at, um, I think it's factcheck.google.com. And it likes to see a lot of information about images. It shows images that are trending online. And it gives you an idea uh, of what images are, including fact checking information. With so, so much false content going around on the internet these days, I think these are really important tools. If people use them, hopefully at least journalists use them to figure out where an image came from, whether it's AI generated, and whether it's being accurately described. And then just to finish up today, there was a big announcement on whoops, Twitter X, three new subscription price tiers. Um, there's a basic account that's only $3 a month that gives you some of the tools like editing your post, longer posts, uh, posting longer videos, but it does not include the little check mark and it has ads. And then at the high end is Premium Plus, which is $16 a month. It has all the features and it says that it is ad free in the for you and following feed. It's very specific about that, which suggests that you may see ads in other places, like if you're looking at a post thread. So, the other thing that Premium Plus gives you uh, is a reply boost. And let me see the exact wording, if I can find it. Uh, so Premium Plus users get access to the largest reply boost. And I think that may be more appealing to 
a lot of users than just no ads. So uh, you see the premium plus information here. It seems like this would be something that would be very appealing to marketers, to spammers, and, you know, people sharing propaganda or wh who, anyone who wants to get the word out and make it more likely that their replies to tweets are going to be seen. I think it's going to be interesting to see if this is actually appealing to enough people to make it worthwhile for X to provide this. It seems like it's probably a pretty limited number considering that the vast majority of account holders on X don't post anything at all. So it's not clear to me what X is trying to do to appeal to people who mostly just look at tweets or like tweets, so forth. And how they're doing is still not clear. X released information about you know their latest numbers and people online are saying that this is misleading based on other publicly available stats. X is privately held. They don't have to follow SEC rules. They don't have to provide true information. So it's really unclear. All right. So those are the updates for this week. I hope you join me next week live and have a fantastic week and a fun Halloween. Thank you so much for joining me today.